our channel I'm Jen and this is Faraby and today we're going to talk to you about how we deal with the public so keep in mind whenever you do run across someone who's excited to see your dog you might be the very first and only service dog handler or service dog team they've ever seen out in public in their lives so they probably are excited so with that being said you should try to be polite and not be rude to people obviously it's irritating and as service dog handlers we know it's annoying and we hear it all the freaking time somebody who randomly sees you for the first time is excited because they've not seen that <laughs> so they are trying to you know express themselves and oh my gosh it's a dog you know they're really excited i think there's a line between being kind polite and then also being apologetic so i think particularly as women and i don't know if everyone watching this is a is a female but i think as women a lot of times we've been raised to apologize for ourselves or to apologize when we inconvenience someone else, even if the reason we're inconveniencing them is because they're doing something dumb. So really keep that in mind whenever you are kind of scripting yourself and coming up with what to say. Um, and the reason I say scripting yourself is because I think I spend a lot of time thinking about if I interact with somebody about my dog, like what can I say that's not gonna open me up for questions and also not going to be rude. I think there's a line between saying, yeah, she's working, you can't pet her, and that's kind of it, where the other option is, oh, I'm sorry, you know, she's working, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, you know, but you can't interact with her because she's working, and you go into an explaining thing, and it makes it feel like I'm doing something wrong. Whenever I say things like I'm sorry, and whenever I say things like that I'm trying to justify my actions for why you cannot do this, it also puts it in my mind, like, is it subconsciously? Is that what I'm trying to say? Um, where it's like that I did something wrong. And if I use words like I'm sorry, and I try to explain why I'm incon inconveniencing someone because they can't pet my dog, then I've noticed that I run through the scenario in my head like afterwards trying to decide if I did the right thing or not um, where if I just kind of handle it like more I guess with confidence and just say like yeah she's working you can't take a picture or you can't pet her she's working or you can even say things like no thank you if someone's like can I take a picture no thank you you shouldn't have to apologize because someone is rude and can't control themselves in public like that's not your fault However, you should handle it with kindness because also, you know, you should just be nice. There's no reason to be afraid to somebody, but you shouldn't apologize. So something else that I have found to be super beneficial to have with me whenever I'm out are stickers to pass out. Um, I typically give these to people who say they want to take a picture of my dog um, or little kids who just like are too little to you know, realize they're being rude. So I'll usually just say, hey, you know, you can't talk to her, but do you want a sticker? You know, you just hand them a sticker. Um, so the stickers we have, they're just with her face on them. And then it does have our Instagram handle on it. Um, and the reason I put the Instagram handle on it is so people can go on there and get information about service dogs. Whenever I redo them though, whenever I order new ones, I'm actually gonna change that and put Probably something like, sorry, I'm working and I can't talk right now. You can go to, you know, and then put our Instagram for information on service dogs. I'll probably do something like that because right now I still have to remember to tell them to go there and, you know, to look at that. Um, but I didn't think about it, obviously, whenever I made the first round. So I got these on Sticker Mule. I think I got 50 for like $15 or something. So it was, a, it was a promo they had going on. So sign up for Sticker Mule emails if you are interested in something like that because they do send out information about um, promotional deals they have a lot. So that I feel like is helpful. You could also do this on a business card or just make little paper handouts. Um, you know, it's, I don't know that it's not budget friendly, but I'll tell you what, it has helped me a ton and it's worth every penny that I've spent to have this because if it's a day where I feel like I can't get it together and like, talk and explain to somebody, you know, what's going on or why I have a service dog or whatever. It's a lot easier for me to say, yeah, you know, um, you can just go to our website and learn more about service dogs, but we can't really talk right now. It's a lot easier for me to do that. I don't feel like I'm being rude. I feel like I'm, you know, 
I'm answering every question you could possibly have with this. So I decided to make a couple of shirts and hoodies and things to wear whenever I'm out in public with my dog. Particularly for days whenever I'm not feeling like dealing with people um, because I felt like that might be, you know, maybe more helpful than even just me putting patches and things on her. So obviously she has patches, we have leash wraps and things. So I've noticed whenever I have the leash wraps on, it seems to get more attention than just the vest on her and her patches. So I thought um, shirts that had things like do not distract my service dog, don't pet my medical equipment, um, you know, things like that on it. I feel like that would be really beneficial. So I've made a few shirts. I will pop some pictures in and I'll link them below where you can buy them if you're interested in getting one yourself. I think that'll help a lot though because I think people, you know, obviously they see a dog but then I think they look at the person and then if your shirt says something really big about, you know, don't bother us, <laughs> then maybe people would not bother us. Like I said, I'll link those for you guys if you're interested in getting one as well. So up to this point, we've been talking about dealing with the public. So I'm talking about the general public, I'm not talking about access issues. So I do wanna to touch on that briefly. So before you venture out with your service dog, I hope that you do know your laws and your rights as a service dog handler. Um, if you wanna get some type of information to have with you, you can get these federal law cards. I'll link them below for you guys. My take on this is probably gonna be different than a lot of people's, but I think there's a few ways you can make this easier for yourself. So if you are going somewhere like, let's say an amusement park, a zoo, an aquarium, um, a concert, something like that, where you know that you are paying a fee before you get in and you've probably pre-bought your tickets, I think at that point you need to either look on their website to see their guidelines for service dogs or if they do not have something like that, you need to call and speak with somebody. The reason is because now, I'm not saying you're required to do that because you're not. You should just be able to walk in off the street and go in just like everybody else. But as service dog handlers, we know you run across people who do not know the law and it puts you in a position to where you're defending yourself on the spot. If you're going to a place like that and you have the opportunity to make sure they have information about service dogs on their website or call and speak with them, what you're actually doing is you're making your day a lot easier the day of. Um, it might not be an issue, but as we all know, it very well could be. So if you just know your rights and you call and speak with them and you make sure they understand your rights, you've had the battle beforehand if there is going to be a battle, so to speak, which there shouldn't be. So when it comes to access issues at restaurants or grocery stores or just shopping in general, I think the best way to handle it um, probably is not going to be the most popular opinion. But what I think for myself, I've not had major issues other than at Publix once where someone, the manager followed me out to my car and told me I couldn't bring my dog in anymore. Um, and I don't go to Publix anymore because of that, because if a manager is not well-trained, then I don't want to support you. This is the unpopular opinion part. I think it's almost easier just to leave. Um, yes, you can stand there and fight for your rights. However, I know myself. And I know that if I start having to get combative with somebody, I'm going to go into an episode. I'm not gonna know what's happening. I know it's going to ruin my day. There is a good chance I'm gonna dissociate and there is a good chance that I am going to ruin the rest of my day um, or my rest of my day is gonna be ruined because of an issue. So I think if it was me and I had an access issue, I think I would just choose another place to go eat or shop or whatever. Um, that is an inconvenience as well. You do have a right to be there. But what I also think you should do, and what I would do, is if I did have an issue, I would document it as best I could, and then I would call the corporate office of whatever place this is, or if it's like a mom and pop type shop, then I would call and speak with them, or email the manager or the owner or whatever, either maybe later that day or either the next day, whatever. I'm not saying you have to do this. Obviously, if you feel like strong and you want to stand there and make them let you in, go for it. Have at it. There's more power to you. The other thing to consider is by doing that, if it's a restaurant particularly and you are going to dine there, you're going to sit there and you're going to give them your money. If you're just wanting to go in somewhere and look, you know, I kind of almost understand if it's shopping, like, yeah, just to make them let you because, you know, you don't have to buy anything. But if it's somewhere that you are going to be spending money, I almost feel like it's more of a slap in the face to them to walk away and not give them your money rather than you fuss with them and then still pay them. 
So you handle however you want, but that is my take. I seriously feel like unless it's something where I have prepaid to be somewhere, I'm not gonna stand there and fuss with them. I'll go somewhere else and take my business elsewhere. I don't wanna give you my money if you're not gonna treat me with respect. All right, guys, I hope this information was super helpful to you. Leave a comment, let me know how you deal with the public. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you soon. Bye, guys.